Let's take a look at editing some of the control objects with inside of our interface. When we come to a page in our interface, we have the ability to select any of the objects on that page. For example, to select a button, simply click on it. You'll find a series of configurable parameters on the right-hand side. The first option is Caption. This is what will actually display on the button itself. So if I want this button to trigger Timeline 1, maybe I'll call it Timeline 1. I then have the ability to set the key. This is what will actually show up on the trigger pane when I start editing my triggers. There are two schools of thought when working with keys. One is to keep them all very uniform, like this, button 0, 1, 0. The other is to make them very unique, so you know exactly which button you're working with. If you're working with a lot of variables, as we'll talk about in some later videos, I highly recommend using the more uniform approach. Underneath that, you have the option to set a default startup state. This can be any of the button options we have within this theme. So for instance, if I want this to be green at default, I can select green. I then have options to configure the X and Y position and the width and height of this button. If I want to drag it around the screen, I must first unlock the screen, and then I have the ability to drag and resize on the screen directly. If I would like to use an image for this button, I have the ability to import an image either from the theme or to import it from an exterior source. You can then configure the font size and whether or not word wrap is enabled or not. You can then choose whether this will function as a momentary or maintained button. Set things like held timeout and repeat interval. At the bottom are some options if you're using this button for navigation. You have the option to go to the next page, previous page, go to page, increase the brightness of the Tessera, decrease the brightness of the Tessera, set the brightness, go back, or lock. For any other function, such as activating timelines or scenes, we'll handle that inside of our trigger tab. Once you've selected a navigation option, you have the option to choose things like which page you'd like it to go to, whether or not there should be a transition, how long the transition should take. If you're working with any of the IR inputs, you also have the ability to assign this button to a particular input, so you can trigger it with an IR remote directly to the touchscreen. Faders have a similar set of configuration options. You have a caption, a key, a startup state, which allows you to change the default color of the fader, XY position, width and height. Then we get into more slider specific parameters, such as unit, should it be in percentage, 0 to 100, or should it be in 8-bit, 0 to 255? Its startup value, its caption font size, whether or not it shows the value, the value font size, spacing between the value and the bottom of the fader, the size of the handle, and associations for IR control. If we want to remove some buttons or faders from a particular screen, we can select them and then hit delete. We now have some space that we could add in new objects. If I want to add in a new button, I can select that and draw it and then configure as necessary. The same for fader. If we make a new page here and we start off with blank, we then have the option to add everything to this page. So I could add in some faders, both horizontally and vertically. I could add in a series of buttons, anything I require for this particular configuration. Once you've added your components, we then have a series of tool for alignment and spacing. For my alignment options, I have the ability to align them all to the left, to the right, to the top, and remember, we have undo and redo tools, the bottom, center, or horizontal center. We also have some spacing controls. If I click the layout selected controls horizontally, it will move and resize the selected controls to fill the selection box with the spacing between the controls as dictated by the spacing value. I could also do this vertically or in a grid. Let's take a look at adding some new objects, such as color pickers. When I add a new color picker, I can set its caption, 
its key, its X and Y position, its width, choose a starting color, font size, and spacing for my caption. To add a label, select the label button at the top and drag it in. I then have the ability to put in a caption. This is useful for just adding text to the screen. We can then select a startup state, such as normal, warning, or warning text. I then can set its X and Y position, its width, height, font size, and word wrap. If I select all of my objects here and delete them, I can then add a keypad. The keypad takes up quite a bit of space in comparison to the other objects. Keypads have the option to configure caption, key, startup state, X, Y, width, height, and then there's configuration options for the keypad itself, the maximum number of digits, and you can choose whether or not you show digits. If you choose not to show digits, the keypad will put in dots when the keypad numbers are entered. By adding and subtracting controls, you can create an interface that suits the needs of your project.